Wow. These CP9 guys or, or girls, uh, like I said, we're not going to be sexist here. I have no idea what they are at this point, are pretty damn powerful. That I know. One Piece, Chapter 344. This be opposing force. Adventure? Excitement? A Jedi craves not these things. Bullshit! That's what a Jedi craves is adventure and excitement. Man! Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and the intricately woven tale of One Piece. Our last chapter saw us with Nico Robin and the mysterious bear figure uh, actually has the power of the door door fruit getting into Mayor Iceberg's office. Him being shot once again. Uh, Paulie, of course, we kind of left him with uh, presuming that he had gotten those blueprints or whatever it was that he was supposed to have. Um, yeah, documents, uh, whatever the deal was that I Iceberg sent him for, and really just the shit had hit, hit the fan everywhere as uh, as you know Zoro and uh, and Chopper and Nami were trying to of course get in there to see what was going on in the mansion. Luffy stuck in between two buildings. All hell is breaking broken loose. There's CP9 people everywhere just killing shipwrights and people that work for the Galley Lock Company and really just anybody. And that's how the chapter left off. That's right where things pick up for the most part. We wind up checking in with, uh, we, we check in with everybody, okay, in the in this chapter. Luffy winds up getting himself free from in between the two buildings, and he's like, oh, I'm going to get in there now and see what's going on with Robin. And he's like, gum, gum, rocket! And he goes flying in, and that's all we see. I mean, he goes flying towards the mansion. And then we go and we see, of course, uh, all the, uh, you know, everybody that, uh, that, that, uh, <laughs> that Zoro and Nami and Chopper drew the attention of that were standing out in front and guarding uh, the mansion uh, are all now running after them. And Zoro's like, you know what, screw this. They're just going to be chasing us forever, so we're going to go and take them out and just go right through the front door. And Nami's like, yeah, but dude, they're not our enemy. They're just shipwrights. They're just doing what they think is right. And Zoro's like, it's okay, I'll use the back of my sword. So he's just like, ding, 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 just knocking dudes out left and right. There's guys dropping. And Nami's like, you know, you can still kill people like that, right? Hitting them too hard, knocking them unconscious. Just because it's the back of your sword, it's not the sharp end. Doesn't mean that it's, you know, but uh, it, it is funny, though, to see. So obviously, they're, they're kind of on their mission. They're doing what they got to do. The majority uh, of this uh, takes place, though, in the actual office, in, in, in Mayor Iceberg's uh, bedchamber, I guess I should say. Uh, and, and it's a conversation between him and Nico Robin that I'll get into in a minute. But first of all, if you remember, we had the bear-looking dude with the door door fruit. Uh, we kind of left him hanging at the end of last chapter. And Tilestone had saw uh, the carnage, what, what happened. Obviously, him taking out Kaku and Rob Lucci and, uh, and just kind of sitting there, you know. So... So, Tilestone's a big mother trucker, man. He's a dude you don't want to mess with, right? Plus, his hair all crazy and stuff like that. So, he sort of looks like the Hulk, like, after he hasn't slept for, like, three days. And he's been on, like, a, like a three-day bender, you know? Anyways, um, I don't know if he's green or not, though. But, because uh, it is a black and white manga. But this dude's big, right? Big, tanned up dude. And he's got this huge hammer, man, you know? I mean, makes it puts, like, Majolner or whatever the hell you call Thor's hammer to shame. You know, it's a big-ass hammer, you know? And he's coming up and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take you out, you know. And he's wondering, of course, how his foreman, you know, his other, you know, compadres there could have went down. But he's just like, <laughs> and as he does that, right, this dude goes and puts up his fist or whatever. And he says, iron something, iron skin, iron wall, iron whatever, right. And it must harden it up his body or whatever, which I don't get him. He's got the door, door fruit. And I don't know, he must have some other kind of power, I guess. I have no idea. But he puts his hand and it just, it just shatters the thing as it hits it, right? And he's like, oh, so you fancy yourself strong, huh? And, you know, Tilestone's like, I can't believe I'm losing in a battle of strength this guy. This guy is, he's the premier strong man on the island, right? And then he just, whoosh, just gets smashed into the ground. One hit, he's done. The ground is, is cracked and everything where his head is implanted into. And now we've got three of the of, of the magical five foremen, you know. And these guys are supposed to be pretty strong. They're not, not people to be trifled with. Three of them are down, right? We don't wind up checking in with Polly until the end of the chapter. And then the, the meat and potatoes of the chapter, I guess you would call it, is really the backdrop and the setting between Robin and between Iceberg. Iceberg winds up coming clean about some things, and I actually made a mistake earlier in there when I said Polly and the Blueprints. He actually comes clean and says that uh, what he's had for all these years is is uh, it, it's the Blueprints for a battleship named Pluton. So apparently the, one of those, those three great weapons that we found out about, uh, Pluton, and then the other one I think was Poseidon, uh, we know at least one of them is this battleship that was in ancient times or was, was used to, who knows, hundreds, thousands of years. I have no idea how long ago, but it was too great of a weapon. 
and uh, nonetheless, though, uh, the, you know, the, the world government, of course, wants it now, and um, and he's, you know, he was tasked with, you know, it's been it's been being passed down from generation to generation and kept secret. He thinks that Robin is like this evil demon and stuff, though, because of the fact and talks about her past. The reason that she got such a high bounty put on her at such a young age is that the world government is like outlawed, not knowing about poneglyphs, but like actually studying them and deciphering or trying to decode them. And I think obviously, at least in my mind, it's obvious that that's because the government's trying to hide or cover up something that they know that they're aware of that they don't want to be common knowledge at all, whatever that may be. And what he explains to her is that because she's probably now the last living person on Earth that can read the Poneglyphs, there's actually a cool tense moment where he goes and actually gets, doesn't really get the drop on her, but he does wind up managing to pull a, a pistol out and he's aiming at her while she's aiming four pistols at him because she's got ones from her extra arms and she's looking all sexy with her cloak over and everything. And, oh boy, I'd love to go to math to ball with her. Woo! Anyway, um, but they wind up, uh, you know, kind of having this back and forth juncture, or you know, this back and forth conversation and, uh, and taking jabs at each other. And Robin's like, you know what, that all may be true, but how the hell do you know me? You don't, you don't know me. I, and, it, and what she's trying to say is that, like, you know, being, there's nothing wrong with me wanting to go in. It doesn't mean that I want to go in and end the world or, or activate any kind of weapon or whatever, you know, because his whole deal is, is that even if I burn the blueprints, somebody like you that can actually read the poneglyphs, uh, has the opportunity, if you piece them together, to find out about and to be able to recreate these ancient weapons. Uh, at least that's what his thought is on this. So he's saying that you know that's why when everything happened, and he says at, at, at and he, and he references references some particular incident. I'm assuming that's what happened 20 years ago when Robin sunk the ships and everything when she was just a kid. Uh, I think they had said that she sunk like eight ships or something, like that, eight naval, naval ships. She's been on the run ever since. But that's why they put such a high bounty on her head at such a young age because the government knows how dangerous it is for someone like her. You know, and his thought, his thing is, is that even if it's a weapon like that in the hands of somebody just or evil, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's still too strong of a weapon to be known to man or to be seen or to be created or to be there. You know, that's what I'm taking from this whole thing. So it's really nice to see this go back and forth, you know, and I'm hoping that we find out a little more about Robin and her past pretty soon. But um, at least that's what it seems like it might be going towards. I don't know. Uh, I've been kind of waiting for that one, though, for about 100 chapters now, 150 chapters since Robin kind of, you know, officially joined the crew. Um, but, it, again, it is neat to see. So they go back and forth for a little bit with things. And the bottom line is, is it's, you know, it's it's more or less the whole, you know, uh, you're evil and you need to die. And she's like, I you know, I'm not evil, I do what I want to do. I, I'm just trying, I, I think in her mind, she's still trying to learn about history. Not I do what I want to do, but, you know, pretty much like I don't, I'm not, I don't have evil intent. And he's like, you're going to bring about upon the destruction of the world, you know, whether you like to believe it or not, you're like the most dangerous person alive, you're going to be the end of mankind. And she's kind of like, well, what are you talking about, you know, I'm hot, I'm tall, I got big tits, you know, I'm not going to be, that's, you know, that's the thought process that's probably going through her head right now, um, is that I don't have evil intentions with this, you know, I just truly want to find out about the missing history and the historical this and that, you know, but again, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the government knows a lot more than they let on about things. And they know that there's something there that they don't want to be uncovered. So the mystery and intrigue, man, is just it's wonderful. Um, but we wind up getting it's great because she goes and then, uh, and then so then he's going to always talk about he's going to kill her. That's the only way, this and that. And she winds up going and, and disarming him easily with some of her hands coming out of, you know, and, and it winds up choking him down and then it puts the gun to his head with one of her hands that's popping out of him. And she's like, is there anything else that you have to say before, you know, before you're dead? And she's just going to kill his ass now. Now keep in mind this whole time that this has been going on, Paulie was supposed to be getting, you know, whatever he was getting, uh, those other two CP9 agents were supposed to have taken it from him, and then they were going to give a signal, so she knew to kill him. No signal yet. Not that, that, that last chapter, not this chapter. Seems like it's a long time, right? Well, then it's kind of neat because he goes and he's like, <laughs> I'm just going to actually, we'll do here. This will be the best. I'll be the best way to do it. So the last page we've got over here as she goes and smashes him down and whatnot and says, is, there any, is that all you want to say before you die? And he's like, I beg to differ. Even if you had killed me, your blueprints would have been stolen and the result the same, right? So, and he's just like, oh my, then let me just say one more thing. You're the ones who've fallen for my ruse. And I was thinking, oh man, I know exactly what's going on, right? And then they confirm it in the next pages because they go and Paulie's sitting there all bloodied and beaten. He's got these blueprints in his hand and the bull looking dude and the other guy or, you know, or whoever, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, the CP9 agents are just like, just give up the plans and this and that, you know? And Paulie's like, <laughs> it just, yeah, I should have just listened to Mayor Iceberg. He said, just throw it away and run because the blueprints are fake. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hot damn.
<laughs> oh man, good stuff over here. So so Iceberg countered what you know he knew that they were drawing him out to get him to draw out they to, to pull him out of hiding, so to speak, with the plans. So <laughs> so he he okie doke them, man, backstabbing, double crossing. I love it. Triple crossing. If that's even a word. Uh, so anyway, that's how the chapter ends off. My chapter question for you, though, brothers and sisters, is I guess what are your thoughts uh, this point at this point on on the conversation uh, that Robin had with Iceberg? Uh, obviously, his plan as well, his ruse. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? I thought it was very clever. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. But thoughts on the conversation itself between those two. Obviously, if you know everything about Robin that's happens that you read three hundred chapters from now, it's I don't want to talk about that right now because I don't know it. But uh, what we found out about her background and her history and really just how he's like, it doesn't matter if you're good or bad, you have the ability to read these things, you're dangerous, you're going to end the world. And she's like, no, I'm not, I just, you know. <laughs> so what are your thoughts, I guess, on that conversation, that interaction? Let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. Remember to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and even my other channel.